Greetings, Real Filmers. I have musician Joel Harrison um, of the Joel Harrison uh, uh, String Choir. Uh, how are you doing? Good. Good, good, good. Uh, well, well, first off, I'm going to hit the ground running. Uh, I know that you're known as a musician that... Uh, that covers a, a multitude of different genres, whether it's jazz or, or rock or, or classical music, what have you, um, uh, to create your sound. So I, I guess the question I have is, did that come as a result of your your post, you know, college adventures? Because I heard that you, you know, you uh, you uh, uh, hitchhiked across country to get a better sense of diversity. Is that true? Uh, that is true, but I think my whole life has been a constant search for different sounds, different approaches, not only to music but to life. And uh, that kind of curiosity has just led me to investigate a lot of different kinds of music and sort of develop my own sound through the associations of these various things that I've studied or been exposed to. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, with that being said, that desire to kind of merge, you know, disparate uh, forms of, uh, of music um, was that was that what helped inspire the formation of your band, or not the band, but uh, of the string, yeah, on the ensemble? Um, I think so, yes, because uh, this particular group is very unusual in terms of its instrumentation. String, string quartet, or in this case, three string players, uh, violin, viola, and cello, and two guitars. And to me, um, this is a way of combining classical instrumentation, string quartet, with my instrument, plus one, the other guitar player, right. and creating an ensemble that has kind of a, I guess you'd say, a blend of jazz and classical sound to it, um, which is very challenging, actually, because uh, there's a lot of written music that the people, mostly the string players, need to execute, and they have to you know, have that um, homogenous, beautiful blend ideally, which string players have when they play together. But then they also have to be creative, and everybody's improvising, and there's times when you don't know what's going to happen. And those two mindsets are, are you know, not, not ev let's put it this way, not everybody can do that. So I have to have certain players who are very skilled at both of those things. Okay, okay. Uh, well, with that being said, on the subject of music, uh, su music in and of itself is constantly changing and constantly evolving. So well, with that being said, uh, where do you where do you see uh, uh, music going in the next five to ten years? And and to add to that, what which artists you know, uh, do you feel is going to be in the forefront of that you know of that change that's that that we'll see in the next couple of years? Oh, it's always a difficult thing to ask a musician where music is going because you first of all you're biased by your own <laughs> viewpoint, and secondly you uh, you just don't don't know. But I would say that there are certain trends that I've observed um, starting you know, probably many years ago that are accelerating. Um, and from, from the viewpoint of what we just talked about, for instance, there are many more string players now, violinists, et cetera, who learn classical and jazz music at the same time. They might even learn them at school at the same time. Okay. There's no longer this break breakdown between I'm either jazz or I'm classical. It's starting to flow together. The process had started oh, 50 or 60 years ago, but it's been accelerating a lot. There's also um, a sense amongst people writing music that uh, sky's the limit. Style doesn't matter as much as it used to. It's just everybody borrows from whatever they, they feel. And they're hearing all kinds of music all the time now. Nothing is stuffed into one corner where it's hidden from the world. Everything, apparently, is at our fingertips. And so uh, the concepts of classical and jazz and R&B and, and rock and country just are c very fluid now, more so all the time. And I would say that that trend is just going to keep continuing um, no matter where you started almost nobody stays in one box anymore okay. all right uh, well w going on to another topic um, you know I did some research and I saw that you 
that you also uh, have, you know, done film. You've helped to score, you know, a couple of films um, in, in your day. And uh, in terms of the trend that I saw, I noticed that oftentimes it was uh, a documentary in most cases. Is there any reason why you are drawn specifically to that to that genre of uh, of film? Well, those were jobs that were offered me. So uh, I would love to score a feature film, but th that's a a tough business to get into. It, it's hard enough to get asked to do a documentary, of which there are many more than feature films. And uh, so, uh, filmmakers, let it be known. I'm ready. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, so, so with that being said, are, are there any particular projects? I know you said that film necessarily is is something that's a little more difficult to get into. Feature films, I should say. Uh, is are there any upcoming projects that you have in in regards to documentaries based off of you know your prior work that you've done? Because I mean, a lot of the documentaries that you that you have worked on have gone on to won Emmys and and you know other awards. Uh, you know, at the Sundance Film Festival, what have you. So. Um, I regret to say that right now I do not have an assignment as a film okay. composer, but um, uh, hopefully something will come along this year. One thing that I've learned since I started doing this is that even in the past five years, maybe ten years, there are film schools, or I should say music schools that now have film scoring departments. And they are churning out people who want to specialize this in this right and left. So the number of people who want to write for film now, as opposed to 15 years ago, is just exponentially increased. Uh, that is a reality that, that I have to face as a composer. And so, you know, a lot of times when students ask me, you know, how did you get into this? How did you get into that? And they want career advice. My advice is, well, try to be as skilled as, at as many things as possible, but realize that on a practical business level, you can't do everything. And if you want to hustle to be a film score composer, you may have to do that film full time, or at least close to it, because the way the world works, it's making connections in various industries and various businesses through your contacts and associations. So uh, m one person can't really be in all places at once. So I think for all of us, we have to ask ourselves what our priorities are. And for me, um, it's still the writing and the playing of music. Um, so that's probably why I've done more of that than the film music. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, outside of uh, of the performance that you have tonight here at um, uh, at the Atlas, so uh, wh where are you guys uh, moving next in terms of, uh, of the tour that you guys have? Well, this tour is fairly short. We're going uh, and playing in two places in Virginia and then over in Ohio. And um, I have various ensembles of different instrumentation, uh, three or four hopefully going all at once. Okay. Uh, more conventional bass drums, ensembles. So I started a, a group a year or two ago with an Indian musician who plays what's called a sarod. Um, it's a, a four-string kind of lute-like Indian instrument. And for me, the, the goal is to try to find work for, for all these groups. And the way things are in our country and m more and more around the world, it, it gets harder to put together long strings of dates when you're, when you're playing art music or you have more than three or four people in the band. So, you know, we, we face that reality and we, we try to play out of town, in my case New York, as much as possible okay. and um, you know we just uh, in, in, in the world that, that we live in we spend half our time being a businessman and half our time being a musician okay. you know, booking gigs trying to put together tours seeking film scores, teaching and then there's the creation of the music and the playing of the music which is of course what I love the best. Okay, all right <laughs> Well, awesome. Uh, well, uh, thank you, uh, Joel. Uh, thank, thank you for your time, and uh, thank you for uh, speaking with Real Film News today. Um, there you have it, Real Filmers. Um, be sure to check underneath the post here for your know, other dates of uh, of um, uh, dates in which uh, Joel's uh, uh, um, string uh, string band will be uh, playing. And so, all the other ensembles. And all the other ensembles. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so take care. Till next time.